Hey, this is another request for Bronson. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for... Uh, he wanted me... He asked me what were my top 10 favorite Tim Burton characters. Now, at first I wasn't sure what he meant because if you think about a lot of the Tim Burton films are based on something else. Like Pee-wee's Big Adventure is based on Paul Rubens and Pee-wee's character. Uh, Batman, of course, based on previous properties. Same with Batman Returns. Mars Attacks is based on the t those uh, violent trading cards. Sleepy Hollow, based on the story from long ago of Ichabod Crane and the Hellish Horseman. Ed Wood, based on the guy, the director of these Z grade movies, and of course Bela Lugosi, who starred in a couple of them. Even you know some of his worst ones, like Planet of the Apes remake, Owls of Wonderland, Dark Shadows. Oh, he did that Dumbo movie that it seemed like nobody liked. I haven't seen it. I didn't care to. Then realize that he's done a lot of, I mean, other than I guess Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands. But I guess I just put it as characters that were featured in Tim Burton movies. So this is the list. I would say my favorite character in a Tim Burton movie would be Beetlejuice. Now granted, this does not mean I look forward to the sequel. The other thing is way too late. It's, what, 25, whatever hell years, too late? But yeah, it hasn't been like 25 years, something like that. I'm trying to remember what year Beetlejuice came out. Was it 88? I want to say, it's, it's too fucking late. But Michael Keaton did a good job as a character. He's raucous, he's rowdy, he's funny, he's rebellious, he's a villain, but at the same time he's likable, and he became more of a good guy in a way in the cartoon Beetlejuice, but even in the movie, like, he's, again, he's the villain in the movie, but at the same time he's very likable, and he's very funny, and he's very charming, and Michael Keane just pulled all, all the stops to remake that character memorable. And he's not in the film a lot. That's the thing. Beetlejuice, when you watch that film, he's not in the film a whole lot. But when he pops up, he makes a hell of an impression. Whether stealing people's tickets and his head shrunk, whether it be doing all these things to try to get this marriage going along, whether it be they try to convince Al Baldwin to not shoot him, and they convince... Uh, sorry. I'm not sorry. The Kavis Gina Davis to hey say his name and invite him to his like model city set. What was, I'm trying to think of this speech. You watch The Exorcist. I forget how many times. Fifty-two times. It is funnier each time you watch it. What do you think about that? <laughs> nice fucking model. It's such a fun, entertaining character. I just have this worry that it's going to be... Not ruined, but just hurt by the sequel. And I would love to be proven wrong. Number two... It's not really a character, but... You know, Bela Lugosi. The way... Martin Landau played him in Ed Wood, which I, I think he won the Oscar for it, because he was able to showcase the humor, but also showcase the tragedy of Bela Lugosi, and he got the accent down, the mannerisms down, and really gave Bela Be Lugosi respect, life to that character, heart to him and his friendship with Ed Wood, at least in the movie. I really enjoy the film Ed Wood, 
and Mar Landau's performance of Bela Lugosi is my favorite part of it. Because I always did like Bela Lugosi. It was always sad that he kind of got thrown away. Because all his accent, he can't, we can't cast him anything because of his accent. But he's a good actor. He's good at what he does. I mean, you want to talk about accents, look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. He had an accent. He was good at what he did. He became one of the biggest box office stars in the 80s and early 90s. Go figure. How times change. So, just Matt Marlando's performance really won me over in that movie. And yeah, it sounds very funny. Like when he's got with the be in the water. This shit's cold. Fuck you. You get in here. <laughs> Just a very earnest, sincere performance. It didn't feel like just trying to be an imitation. It felt like this is the core of what Baylor Gozi maybe perhaps was like. Number three, I put Batman. This is Batman. It's Michael Keaton is Batman. I'm Batman. Yes, I will agree if you look at Batman Batman Returns, there's not a lot to his character development wise. You don't get a whole lot of his backstory. You get little teeny teeny bits. There's not a whole lot of drama for an actor to really sink their teeth into in those two movies. But he had the voice, he had the presence, he had the look, he had the eyes. He had all those elements that worked in its favor, even despite those limitations. And that alone, that's the thing, like imagine if you did have a bit more depth like some later Batman films did. Or at least attempts on because Dark Knight Rises still sucks, and I'm still not a fan of Batman Begins. But I can appreciate in Batman Begins what they were trying to do, and I can see why people liked it. It's just there's other elements of what I don't like about it. But I did. Like, Batman Begins, I can understand. I'm not a fan of it, but Dark Knight Rises, I don't. But that's a whole other thing. And Dark Knight, I go back and forth. I, I don't. If I'm being honest, I don't hate the Dark Knight. If I'm being honest, sometimes I like to say that just to get people mad, but I don't hate The Dark Knight. I don't think it's a bad movie. I do think it's a tad overrated, and I don't think it's one of the best movies of all time. But do I sincerely think The Dark Knight itself is a bad movie? No. It's just now a film I really rewatch, and there's other Batman films I enjoy more. I do think it's the best of the Nolan trilogy. Mostly because of Heath Ledger. But anyway... Michael Keaton, the, his demeanor, his voice, for what little he had to do, or he had, they could do, he sold it, and and then some. And that's hard to do, but Michael Keaton pulled it off, and that's why I put him up there pretty high. Number four, Jack Nicholson is the Joker. I would say he is my favorite Joker, although I really do like Joaquin Phoenix's performance in Joker. But Jad Nicholson just had such a fun demeanor to it. What do you want? My face in the one dollar bill. And you wouldn't need a guy with glasses, would you? Like these little things, it was just great to see I'm a big Jad Nicholson fan. It was great to see him just having a ball, having fun, as in fetch his laugh. He just really exemplified Joker's personality, whether when he's killing Jack Palance and all the weird ways he's trying to shoot, when he's doing the commercial for his his uh, product, he smiled again and again. And he just had a great laugh for Joker. And what a wonderful choice, especially at that time. Like the perfect choice for Joker at that time was Jad Nicholson. And he did a bang-up job with it. Despite what James Gunn wants to say. Batman ain't nothing sucks. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 I thought sucked. How about that? 
James Gunn. That's just my opinion. But yeah, James Gunn, he said about me. If you don't like Batman anything, that's fine. I just think James Gunn shouldn't talk because you made a shitty movie like Darcy Galaxy 3. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't think it was that. This out, The second half, I, I didn't mind. The first half was really, really shitty, though. And overall, wasn't a fan. But the third act wasn't... I didn't mind, to be fair. But we'll see what you do with your fucking Superman movie. Okay, James Gunn. Anyway, number five, I'll put Ichabod Crane, sleep, uh, Johnny Depp's character in Sleepy Hollow. I do like that film quite a bit. It's probably the last Tim Burton film I truly, truly enjoyed. Because right after that, he did Planet of the Apes. And then a bunch of other bullshit. Owls of Wonderland, Dark Shadows, all that shit. But I really like Sleepy Hollow. I like the, the look of the film, the art style. You got Christopher Walken as the Hellas Horseman. You got Christopher Lee and other people in supporting roles. And it was cool to see Johnny Depp as his old school. Did he take the Ichabod Crane character? And he's much more about the scientific method. A little bit of Sherlock Holmes. But, but at the same time, he's very... The side of blood just completely affects him. And you realize because of something that happened long ago with his mom. So there's a bit of an interesting backstory to it. And let's say it was an interesting lead character I have for that kind of film. I thought Johnny Depp played that fairly well. It's been forever since I've seen Sleepy Hollow. But uh, one I like to revisit again. But I did quite enjoy that film and that character. Definitely one of my favorite Johnny Depp characters that he's played. Number six, Selena Kyle, Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns. My favorite Catwoman, I think it's the best version of Catwoman for me. How kind of meek and mousy she is, and how violent her death is, and just how she really turns that performance on when she's going around her apartment and she's dazed and confused, and how... You can see her kind of this kind of nerdy type of shy person, and then boom, just become the hottest piece of thing in the whole city with the costume and meow. And you, like you have to do these things like a cat that's gonna look ridiculous, but to her, like licking herself, she pulls it off, and she's very sexy the boot. And you buy her in Sandy too. Like when Christopher Walken is shooting at her and she's counting the, the lives she's losing. Nine. Ten. All good girls go to heaven. I forget what the, the numbers were actually. Because this isn't like nine lives, so. Or maybe six, seven. Six, seven. But just like her just completely dazed. Let me say one for next Christmas. And was the taser theme and gives him a kiss. She's able to sell sexy and she's able to sell insanity. So, she, very hard thing to do, but she sold that very well. Uh, number seven, Johnny Depp and Ed Wood. I do like the film Ed Wood. Yeah, my favorite thing is Baylor Dozy, but I thought Johnny Depp played the, you know, I don't know if Ed Wood himself really was like this in real life. The guy who made Play 9 from Outer Space and all these Z-Gray movies back in the day. But I like the way Johnny Depp played him where a guy who's just... He meant well. He was always done on to make a picture. He just did not know what he was doing. Well, the headstone moved. Oh, it doesn't matter. The audience won't, won't notice it. He was always, like, optimistic and gun-ho, and he was going to make the best movie ever, even though they became the worst movies ever, but he was so gun ho by just that kind of fetches optimism that if that was the case for the real Ed Wood, then no wonder people, like, hey, well, this guy believes in so much, and he's so hyped about it, I guess I'll do it too. 
And I thought Johnny Depp pulled it off fairly well. <clears throat> Number eight, Danny DeVito as the Penguin. I know some people don't like this version of the Penguin, but I actually didn't mind that Tim Burton took a bit more monstrous take on it. And Danny DeVito sold to the slimy aspects of it. Great makeup. His voice. You really don't think you're going to win, do you? Things change. And just, uh, he was able to sell this vicious slime ball quality to it. I mean, this is a guy ready to kill a whole city of kids. Like, people may forget that like, his circus guys were going to take all these kids and lead them into their deaths and their fucking drowning <laughs> and shit. So, not the nicest guy ever, but I, mean, I thought Dan DeVille pulled that icky feel to the tear off fairly fairly well it was a memorable villain and, and i always liked batman returns i always thought that was a good solid sequel to batman some days i wonder if i like batman returns more than the original sometimes i do go back and forth which i like more batman or batman returns i, I will admit and if someone says they like batman returns more i can understand number nine this might sound weird but i put I forget the terror's name, but Jim Brown and Mars Attacks. Now, I'm not a fan of Mars Attacks. I thought that it should have been R-rated like the trading cards, because that was the appeal of the trading cards, was how crazy violent it was. When they take that away, I thought it kind of took away a bit of the, the fun that you get out of it. It was cool to see all these familiar people, but then... It's just for them to get killed off. And I thought, okay, that's kind of a waste of a cast. Where these actors, like Michael J. Fox, and like all these guys could be, all these folks could be utilized a lot more. I don't think they were utilized as much as they could have been. And then the people that are left standing are kind of like the people I don't, most part, don't care about. Like a grandma and her grandson and yodeling music and. I'm like, what? I do like Jack Nicholson as the president in the movie. I almost put him on the list. If he didn't get killed off and he was able to give even more of a crazy performance battling the aliens at the end, maybe that could have been the case. But put Jim Brown in there. Just first off, rest in peace, Jim Brown. Wanted to mention him. Sally, he passed away. And number two, just a badass. I wish he was in that film more. But he's the badass knocking, having a boxing match with the damn Martian, knocking him back and forth. I wish there was more of him. I wish we got to see him tip more ass. And he's pretty much the only person who lives that I actually like. Because the other people is like they get killed off. And the only person left alive that I like is Jim Brown. I didn't mind the, the, the person that played his girlfriend, his wife, to be honest, but I forget her, the actress's name. But I thought, oh yeah, Jim Brown, he was able to make it, he's a badass. Uh, that was cool to see. But like I said, Mars Attached is one of those films that I want to like, but I mean, there's just certain elements I wish were, were different about that movie. But there's also elements I can appreciate it. That I can see why people liked it. But rest in peace, Jim Brown. And number 10, Pee Wee. Gotta mention Pee Wee. Rest in peace, Paul Rubens. Uh, he really made that character his own. And any time I think of him, I think of Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And how just excitable and like positive and just ditty about life in general, just waking up, and ever since I was a kid, for some reason, I always remember the bit with him and the Mr. T cereal. Pitted food to eat my cereal. And just the way he's chewing it up, just how over the top he is. 
which in lesser hands could become very, very annoying. But he didn't really make Pee Wee annoy in Pee Wee's Bit Adventure. Like I said, you two really skirt the line that he, it could be very irritating, aggravating, but Pee Wee instead comes off as lovable and sincere and someone to root for during this crazy adventure that he has. So, definitely rest in peace to the Paul Rubens there. But yeah, with that said, there's the list. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later.